Welcome to another edition of Bogosity, the show that is fair and biased towards reality. In every election year, we're inundated with polling results of all kinds. There's hardly any news organization that doesn't continually run poll after poll to tell us how the different candidates are doing. They say these polls are scientific, but the truth is, election polls are nothing but Bogosity. You just can't get away from it. Every election year, we hear how so-and-so is doing against their opponents or among different demographic groups. They insist that these polls are scientific and accurate. But the big question is, if that's true, then why are they wrong a staggering amount of the time? First, a couple of scientific points. Every poll has a margin of error. If a poll's margin of error is 3%, then that means that the result should be within 3% of the actual value. So a result of 45% would put the real result between 42% and 48%. There's also a confidence rating. If a poll's confidence rating is 95%, then that means that there's a 95% chance of the results falling within the margin of error which means there's a 5% chance, or 1 in 20, of the poll giving crazy results. If you want a higher confidence rating, you have to increase the margin of error. If you want to decrease the margin of error, you have to decrease the confidence rating. One more point before we begin. We're going to be looking at polls covering various different candidates and opinions. I urge you to put your own political opinions and biases behind you as you watch this. This isn't about what candidate is best or what issue is right. It's about the accuracy of the polls themselves. Like what happened in the 2008 New Hampshire primary, where Hillary Clinton took the state in defiance of the polls, showing a solid lead for her opponent, Barack Obama. First question, Bill, why were the polls so far off? I mean, some polls had, yeah. had him 11 points out in front of her. There are three theories. One, uh, that uh, there was a late surge, perhaps associated with her show of emotion. Uh, with voters moving to her at the last second. A uh, second is race. Many voters might have said to the pollsters they were going to vote for Barack Obama, but in the end, they d they couldn't do it or they wouldn't do it. A third. Well, this she, is what some African American columnists have referred to as the voting booth conversion. That's right. right. People tell pollsters they're going to vote uh, for a black man, but in the end, they won't do it. And the third, which you're hearing about all over the blogs, is there was some corruption of the voting machines, uh, so therefore somebody interfered with the results. Really? I can think of a fourth possibility. Your polls are bogus! He's willing to go all the way to voter fraud, for which there is absolutely no evidence over the inaccuracy of the polls themselves. Listen to what he says. Eight polls were taken just before the uh, uh, primary, and they all showed Obama in the lead. Now, all the pollsters are unlikely to make the same mistake. So it must have been something that happened. Really? That isn't what ABC polling director Gary Langler told Stephen J. Dubner of the Freakonomics blog. He said, I'm skeptical of the notion that survey respondents lie about their voting intentions. Blaming the respondent is too easy and out. The reality is that pre-election polling relies on accurately modeling who is or isn't going to vote. It's plenty likely to be bad modeling not lying respondents that causes the estimate to be blown. So if all of those polls use the same bad modeling techniques, we can expect them to get the same bad results. For example, if they all base the likelihood of the respondent voting in the primary on whether or not they voted in the last Democratic primary, then they're undercounting voters who weren't old enough to vote last time, or who immigrated here in the interim, or who were apathetic enough about politics but are now more active. And of course, all phone polls undercount younger demographics and more tech-savvy people since they tend not to have landlines, relying on cell phones and internet phones that can't be called by the pollsters. When it comes right down to it, there's absolutely no evidence at all that people tell pollsters they'll vote for a black candidate and then don't. In fact, when Carol Mosley Braun was elected to the Senate in 1992, the first time an African-American woman had been elected senator, the election results were the opposite of what the polls showed, 
and the exact opposite of what this effect is supposed to be. Her support was underestimated in the polls, not overestimated. And when Obama himself won the Democratic Senate primary in 2004, he did so despite the polls saying that Blair Hull had a substantial lead over him. Then his support was underestimated in the polls, not overestimated. Of course, in those cases, they could have just said that voters didn't want to stick their neck out to the pollsters and say they were voting for a black candidate. That's the thing about pseudoscience. You can always come up with a good explanation after the fact. But ask yourself this. If this is an issue of overestimating the support for minority candidate and it's a known factor, why didn't they try and compensate for it? Over on the Republican side of things, weird things were happening, as one individual found when he tried to show his support for Ron Paul in a phone poll. Ron Paul wasn't included, so he tried to select the option Other. Hello, this is IMC Polling, calling with a one-question opinion poll regarding the 2008 Republican presidential primary. Okay. What do you want me Your to say? Your primary election was held today. Obviously, this is a recorded voice and not a live pollster. Press 6 for other or none of the above. Press 7 to no longer receive these types of calls. Thank you. The number we contacted you on will be removed from any future messaging lists. There's a problem. He hit 6 for other, not 7, to be removed. Here's the tone again. Here's the tone for when you punch 6. And here's the tone for when you punch 7. Yes, that's right. His vote, and presumably that of many, many others as well, wasn't counted properly. Here's where you start getting into the difference between a poll and a survey. Although the terms are often used interchangeably, a survey is much more scientific. With a survey, a real, live human being actually talks to the person and gets their proper reaction. Sometimes polls do this, but even in those cases, if someone supports a candidate who isn't on the list, they won't count it or mark it as other or undecided. A scientific survey would never do that. They would always record the correct response, regardless of whether or not it was in some kind of predetermined list of responses. Not only that, but a real scientific survey uses psychology to try and determine if the respondent is mistaken or lying. They may ask the same question in a different way, or try other tricks to make sure they can determine the genuine response that they need to record. They try to weed out both false positives and false negatives. Polls don't do any of that, and the result is that with a poll you can get whatever result you want.